Hi, thanks for being in a new video. Samsung has just unveiled One UI 7, albeit in a very strange way. I'm going to tell you what's known so far. Let's get started. Uh, this was done during Samsung's developer conference. Uh, Samsung was expected to present in much more detail this new version of its operating system, but curiously, they focused more on other things that I will mention to you below by way of summary. And of One UI 7, they talked very little. However, Samobile has been able to get access to a device with One UI 7 running, so it was able to give us a glimpse of what Samsung is preparing. However, it makes the clarification that this is just an initial version and that it could still change a lot for the final release. At the developer conference, Samsung detailed that they want One UI to be based on three principles. First, that it has a simple interface, simple to use and simple to see, also that it be stunning, I guess referring to some effects or styles they might have. And finally, that it be emotional. That is, that also with its animations and styles make you feel emotions and practically feel what you are touching on the screen. Based on those principles, Samsung is going to build this operating system. And at the conference, they also highlighted good luck with which you can achieve even more extreme customization of your system. For those who don't know, good luck can already be used from previous versions of One UI. If you install it, it will allow you to modify many things, and it is important that Samsung continues to detail it and keep it, unlike its arch-rival Apple, which does not let its users move almost anything in the system. At the conference, they also detailed that One UI 7 will be coming officially, along with the next-generation Galaxy device, referring to the Galaxy S25 Dust, but still without specifically naming its name. That was all they said at the conference, so as you'll notice, they didn't show anything specific, but as I anticipated, thanks to our friends at Sam Mobile, we can have a closer look at the interface, which for now is in a very early stage that couldn't even be considered a beta. By the way, speaking of the beta, they said at the conference that it will be available later for some Galaxy devices. However, they didn't say any exact date. So through these videos captured by Sam Mobile, we can have a quick look at the new battery icon, which is now confirmed to be horizontal, very similar to the iPhone. Surely you will be able to toggle on or off if you want to see the percentage inside. You can also take a look at the animations, which in simple terms look very similar to past animations. Perhaps if we see a slow motion comparison, we will notice some difference from the last generation to the current one. But, in general terms, it keeps the same essence in its animations. However, in this small clip, we also get to see the new icons that have already been leaked to me previously, although I guess some of them could still change. We get to see the new camera, gallery, internet and settings icons, which are the ones that look very different from last generation. Personally, I hope the gallery icon is not the one they are putting, please. Another subtle change that can be noticed in these videos that have been shared with us is the shape of the system buttons. And you can see it when the first dialog box pops up when you open the web browser. These buttons are now a little more rounded. In general, the entire interface has opted for a more rounded design. There is also a new notifications panel where the quick settings disappear and the notifications gain much more space as they are now larger and are separated from each other. The truth is that they do look a bit like iOS notifications. I just hope they keep the grouping and other things that make Android notifications I like more. According to what you reach to see, they do have the quick action buttons for some notifications, but I think this is the biggest visual change from the last generation because now they look much more rounded and as I tell you, this separation between one and another also makes it look a little cleaner. However, if you receive too many notifications, possibly a very long list remains due to this separation. Also, you get to see a pretty nice bouncing effect on these notifications when you get to the end of the list. So overall, I think it's a positive change. The quick settings are now on another page, again very similar to what the iPhone does, although many other Android manufacturers have been making this change for a while now. That is, by swiping on the left side, we will be able to access the notifications, and by swiping on the right side, we will be able to access the quick settings panel. This quick settings panel has also been redesigned by having the connectivity quick settings at the top, which I find positive because they are settings that we are not going to change so often, so you do not need to have them so close. Let's remember that one of the design lines of One UI since its foundation is that you can use it comfortably with one hand. 
And then in a third position are placed the brightness and sound settings divided into these two boxes with rounded corners, maintaining a horizontal adjustment. In fact, Samsung previously did not let us configure the volume with some slider, but now through this update, this button will appear. And I like the way they have grouped these screen and sound controls because also in the screen box appears the care mode for the view and dark mode, while in the sound also in addition to modifying the volume, you could modify the sound mode and possibly enable another option that I do not reach to distinguish. And interestingly, smart view and device control still appears at the bottom. That is, they are the buttons that are more within reach, which seems to me a mistake because they are buttons that we also do not use so often. So from my point of view, these buttons should be moved to a higher part. But let's wait to see if Samsung still makes some changes before launch. Let me know how you would like the arrangement of this quick settings panel to be. Although personally, I would also like Samsung to let Samsung customize this quick settings panel like it does with iOS 18 where you can reposition any item. I think that would make things a lot easier. The recent apps list also has a new design. Now we're going to find these app screens overlapping each other like with a card format. In fact, if you want to have this setting on your Galaxy today, you can activate it with Good Lock, which as I told you at the beginning, is an application that you can install on your Galaxy to modify several things in the system, including the animation of the recent app screen. So, I don't know if this is going to be the final animation, but it's a change that Samsung seems to be proposing in this test version. In the app drawer, there has also been a change. Now the search panel has been moved to the bottom so you can reach it more easily with one hand. And something that strikes me also in this animation is that these little pop-up dialogues where they show you some information, they are no longer above the keyboard. But if the keyboard appears, this little dialogue is going to come up above the keyboard so that it's not getting in the way and now it also has a button on these dialog boxes. I hope this is a system-wide change and not just for Samsung apps because it would be very interesting. A new option present is Galaxy Avatar, which is present within the advanced features. This seems to be a redesign of AR emoji, which we will all agree was a lousy name compared to Galaxy Avatar. Although from Samobile they could have access to this section only for a second and then they had to remove it, but this was enough to give us a lot to talk about. Surely through the cell phone you will be able to create this personalized avatar, very similar to what we saw with the AR emoji, but surely they have made this change to be able to use this term Galaxy Avatar in their next mixed reality glasses that are said to be developed in conjunction with Google and Qualcomm. So, I anticipate that this will be just the entrance to that virtual world and of course you will still have the ability to create stickers with your character, to mount the character on the camera and other things as you can see in this screenshot. Dal. Finally, the camera is also redesigned, grouping now the controls that were previously at the top, moving them to the bottom in a drop-down menu again so you can reach them more easily with one hand. This change seems very positive to me and to achieve this they moved the list of camera modes to the bottom of the shutter. So the change is fine, I like it, this is just a change of positions, but surely we could also see some new features or refinement in the mode list. Finally, they showed the gallery and how it remains showing the most recent photos at the top. It seems to me that it would be great if Samsung would allow users to choose whether they want the most recent photos to appear at the bottom or the top. The iPhone by default shows them at the bottom. I think all of us Galaxy users are used to them appearing at the top, but if they want to keep this essence of having easy one-handed use, maybe it would be a good idea to give the user a choice. Although we all know that if you swipe down, even if the picture is all the way to the top, it's still at your fingertips. So these are some of the changes that can be seen in this test, just one UI 7. Remember that surely the Galaxy S25 will be released in January and it is absolutely certain that with the arrival of Galaxy S25, this new version of One UI will be released, which will receive many, many Galaxy devices as Samsung has given a promise of several updates even to its low-end devices. For now, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, you know you can tell us about it and see you next time.